Hi, I'm Jessie Savell, founder and owner of Blue Barrel Rainwater Catchment Systems. Today I'm going to show you how to irrigate with gravity feed through a drip irrigation system from a set of rain barrels. So what you're looking at here is a Blue Barrel Rainwater Catchment System. I'm not going to go into detail about how this works today. We have lots of resources on our website for that, bluebarrelsystems.com. Um, very briefly, the water comes off the roof here goes through this downspout diverter and fills these three barrels in unison. They all fill and empty at the same time. And because they're plumbed underneath, I can grab all that water through a single valve. I have a couple valves here, but what I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna hook our drip irrigation line up to this bottom draining valve, and I'll still have access here to fill watering cans and buckets. Um, so we do sell two types of drip, drip irrigation here. Um, one is called inline emitters, and this is what inline irrigation line looks like. Um, it has pre-drilled emitter holes every nine inches or so. We have other videos on our website and on YouTube highlighting how these work, so I'm not going to focus on this today. I'm going to focus on our other kind of drip irrigation kit, which is bubbler emitters. Now the bubblers look like this. You need to come in closer. Um, and while the, while the inline we recommend for vegetable gardens, you can lay that, three, uh, that quarter inch tubing down a row of vegetables of regular spacing. This is better for ornamental gardens, which is what I'm irrigating now. You get to custom punch your emitters um, and stick these in exactly where you have plants. Um, so I cheated a little bit and pre-installed um, most of it. It was really easy. Um, but what you get with the bubbler emitter kit is a big roll of, of a half inch main line and this is how you create your main garden layout. Um, you're also going to get a whole bunch of fittings, okay, so L's, T's, depending, and even a couplers, so I was able to kind of create a ring around my um, garden. Um, and then you also get, let's see, where's the end piece? Um, Oh, I thought I had a figure eight end. I didn't use figure eight ends here, but you can end um, your line with a figure eight fitting by crimping it um, and inserting the figure eight. Um, mine's actually a closed loop, so I didn't need to do that. Um, I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to cut this line and customize your layout. Um, so I'm using a pipe cutter. You can also use just regular garden cutters, um, but the line cuts really easily. You cut segments to length. And then these are called compression fittings. So they go in, you have to use a little bit of force, but you kind of push and twist, and then they seal really nicely and that's done. So you can kind of create your layout that way. So again, I've already done that. Um, and now I'm gonna show you some other components to the system. So every drip irrigation uh, system, and this, it doesn't really matter if you're doing gravity fed, pressurized, rainwater, city water, you always need a fine mesh filter. Um, for gravity fed, I recommend these streamline irrigation filters. They're actually less expensive than those big kind of Y-shaped cartridges that you're used to seeing. Um, and with gravity feed, um, you know, I'm on a pretty flat site here, um, but my barrels are elevated up on cinder blocks and just this amount of drop you'll see is enough to create easily enough pressure to irrigate through a gravity fed drip line. Um, so I want a filter that's not gonna make you know, all the, all the fittings, we want to minimize the number of twists and turns. So these streamlined filters really help you keep that pressure up as much as possible. So um, that's a fine mesh filter um, that you can see here. It pops out really easily to clean. This is available on our website at bluebarrelsystems.com. All of the equipment is. Okay, so this is very simple. I'm just going to screw this on to my outlet. Okay. So when I turn the water on, it's now going to come out through the filter. And then just to show you, you can unscrew this. So if you want to shoot the water out this way, once your system's all set up, you still can. Okay, now the next piece I'm going to show you is our drip irrigation timer. Um, this is, of course, optional. You can always turn the thing on and off by hand, but the timer, um, highly recommended and very popular, um, lets you set frequency and duration. So I can sort of set it and forget it. Um, so this also just screws on right here. Oops. Okay, now a quick note on timers. Um, we do sell zero pressure uh, gravity-fed irrigation timers. Um, you don't want to buy a regular irrigation timer. 
them are those little green egg shaped ones that you find in the hardware store they actually require pressure to stay closed so you'll turn it on and think it's working but because it won't close fully you'll drain your rain barrel so you want to make sure you buy equipment that's specifically meant for gravity fed irrigation so i can turn this on to show you now it takes a minute but you'll hear the motor there it goes oops got to turn my valve on of course but then the water is going to come out that way okay um and to complete my setup our our irrigation kits come with this this is your adapter that's going to tie you from whether you're going straight from the filter or straight from the um, timer this just screws on so all of our equipment is standard three quarter inch garden thread. So it's compatible. You know, if you have other splitters, other spigots, things like that should be compatible. And this is just a compression fitting. So I'm gonna stick that main line in there. Okay. Um, and then I wanna show you how, to, how easy it is to kind of punch your emitter. So again, um, I get to custom punch my emitters. Now I've already installed most of them, but I'll do one here on camera so you can see how that goes. So our kits, of course, come. these are stakes. I've already put the stakes in, but that's how you stake down your line. Um, and then this is a hand punch tool, um, easy to use. So I'm just gonna kind of grab my line. This plant already has one emitter on it. I wanna put another, okay? And I just kind of hold it taut with one hand. Oops, and then push and twist. Now my five-year-old son helped me with the rest of my emitters the other day. So you can get the family involved. And I'll just say, if you, punch a hole and say, oopsie, um, these are called goof plugs and you can actually plug a hole with one of these. Um, but luckily my five-year-old did a great job. We didn't even use any goof plugs. Okay, so I'm gonna just punch that in and now we're all ready to set up. So let's see how this works. I'm come back over to the timer and I'm gonna turn everything on. Now I'm not setting my frequency and duration yet. I mean, that's easy to do. I can tell it to come on for 10 minutes every 12 hours just by you know, I have lots of choices here for frequency and duration, but for now, I'm just gonna turn the thing on. Oops. Now listen for that motor. There it goes. So that's the sign of the, t okay, and I can hear the water. I don't know if you can hear it. So come on over and look at that. So there's no pump on this. This is all gravity fed. And you can see, I don't even have a lot of fall between my barrels. Um, we're getting good distribution throughout the whole system. I can kind of hear those emitters waking up. Now, come back here because I want to show you how I can control the flow. Um, so, as I can actually twist this emitter, I can twist all of them. See that? So, if I find some plants need more water, I can either add more emitters or I can control the flow through each. Now, that's really convenient for gravity feed because on a flat site, you can get the water to distribute about 20 to 25 feet. Um, if you have slope working in your favor, you can distribute it much farther, vir virtually indefinitely. Um, what you can't do is get the water to go uphill. But if you're on a flat site, you might find that the farther emitters aren't getting as much water. So that's why these bubblers are so great, because you can individually twist them um, based on where your plants are in the line or how thirsty each plant is. Um, so you can see, if we do a little tour, I don't know how useful it is to zoom in, but you'll see we have a couple emitters on each plant. And I'm just going to observe how those plants are doing um, and then I'll set my frequency and duration. And then I can just let it go for the rest of the season. I guess the last thing I'll show you, back to the rain barrels, I put a tank gauge on here. This is a very useful feature because you, you know, gravity fed irrigation, it's a lot of observing and figuring out what works. So a lot of people turn it on, observe for a few days, do their plants need a little more, or a little less. It's hard to know exactly how much they're getting. So this tank gauge at least will help you see how much the gauge is moving. And I have three barrels here, so I can kind of back calculate. Um, if I leave it on for 15 minutes, how much, you know, how much water do I lose with 15 minutes of flow? Um, so I hope this was instructive. I was highlighting our um, gravity fed irrigation kit for with bubbler emitters. We have other types of irrigation equipment too. Um, Bluebarrelsystems.com. We are your resource for DIY rainwater harvesting and gravity fed drip irrigation. We'll see you out in the garden.